Moving well, on <laughs> to the bare minimum, child, because, girl, you could have kept this. <laughs> Up next on you could have kept this. Up next on you could have kept this. Miss Amaretta. It's your girl East checking in with Nightmare Radio. And it's your girl Brittany and Don't Sleep. We are coming to you with episode 80. Yes. It's been a good, good week. It's been a good season so of far, Nightmare so Radio good. Show. Yes. My everything. personal favorite, if you haven't tapped in last week's episode, the N-word. The N-word was so good. Um, that conversation we had with Mucho this week, well, that I had with Mucho this week was really good as well. Be sure to go to our YouTube channel to like, comment, and subscribe. For all of our bonus content, because you never know what, what else is out there. Shout out to With All Due Respect Podcast. Hey. They got some bonus content out there as well. Don't sleep, don't sleep. So uh, without further ado. Yes, this episode is sponsored by Her Wine. Please be sure to go to herwines.com and use Don't Sleep when you check out for your purchase of your favorite bottle of wine. This week I was drinking on that girl's night in. Oh, really? Yes. It was I seen you in too. the interview. It was good. There you go. See, I need a re-up. I need to get my mama needs a break. But the wine of the month is still in my feelings. And you can still be up in your feelings if you tap the link in our bio and jam out with us on the In, our, in My Feelings uh, Apple Music playlist. If you got Spotify, sorry, I didn't do what I was supposed to do. But um, Brittany, <laughs> just pray for us. But also, February 23rd, be sure to join us for the More Life, More Wine, More Convos event this month. Wednesday, we are continuing the conversation of strengthening black voices. We've been seeing y'all in the comments, and we would love to see you guys in the audience this yes. week. Tap in so we can continue the conversation, all right? Yes. So without further ado, we're going to hop straight into the culture list. All right. Black TV is winning. This week, it was a great week for black television. If you haven't tapped in already, you need to be tapped into Bel Air. It's um, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air reboot. It's a 2022 version of the classic, iconic sitcom. The series is produced by Will Smith and his production company, but it's. I just want to put the, the record out there that it's not like the original um, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. This is actually a drama. They've done an amazing job updating the storyline, bringing you extremely relevant conversations. Um, and it's a whole dark skin cast. You know, they got dark skin on TV. Uncle Phil is fine. Jeffrey is uh, a snack. Um, I heard Jeffrey didn't clean up a damn thing yet. I mean, that's to be said. If you tapped in, uh, the new episodes come out on Thursday, and this past Thursday's episode did drop a bomb. So we know. I wonder who's behind it. I don't want to make a spoiler, but it is streaming only on Peacock, and that costs four ninety nine. Yes, I'm already giving my something ninety nine to everybody else, exactly. and it's just like another one. These little ninety nines is really adding up. Ninety nine. Okay, where is that from? In a half, won't do. You don't know the song? Uh -uh. You tripping. <laughs> you tripping. <laughs> anyway, up next on the Black uh, Reboot uh, meter, we got Martin coming up on 30 years since uh, Martin graced our TV screens. And so the entire surviving cast did agree to do a special BET Plus um, reunion that uh, I believe it airs um, tomorrow on Sunday. So if you're listening to this, it airs on it aired on February 20th. It's also supposed to include some um, some Easter eggs, some surprise special guests, some of the appearances um, that that made Martin what it was. So that's also something to look out for. And another honorable mention is Atlanta. Donald Glover series is coming back in March, but he announced that this is his last season. So first, y'all gonna take Insecure from us. And then we ain't get Atlanta for about two years. Now this is it. Right. Y'all deprived us for two years of Atlanta. And now you're telling us that this is the last season. So we know that the spoiler came out that um, that Paperboy is in Paris. Yeah. Um, so we just can't wait to see where Irvin the gang takes us. Um, yeah. Yes. Also, another honorable mention, Snowfall comes back February 23rd. Showtime. Also. Right. 
FX. FX. Oh, okay. I'm about to say because see, or these... Hulu or Hulu. So. Okay, okay, okay. Everybody on the streaming. Mm-hmm. Something 99. Okay. Shout out to our girl Meg. Hey, girl. Hey, she celebrated her 27th birthday this week, and this week she announced the Pete and Thomas Foundation. It's a nonprofit organization focused on uplifting and assisting women, children, and senior citizens um, in underserved communities in the Houston area. So this. Uh, foundation that she made was in honor of her parents that she lost yeah so uh pete joseph pete and holly thomas that's it this foundation is done in her honor in their honor yeah that's so that's good. that's amazing that's, that's amazing shout out to her for continuing to do the lord's work yes yes that's exciting also more exciting news our girl Issa ray she is really the epitome of making your dreams come true okay she did in this last season of insecure put that she was the first person to receive like the key to her city yeah and now she really like manifested that dream by yeah. receiving the key to her city after 114 years the inglewood native yes she yes. got the key to inglewood so don't nobody wood. else it's Issa Wood. so nobody else got the key to Issa Wood but Issa. exactly oh I after love 114 that years that's that now that's what's up i love that for her keep it locked because we'll, we'll talk about Issa a little bit later we got to give her her flowers in her own special way got some olympic wins too you know the beijing winter olympics are underway right now and uh the special special attention goes to a little black girl magic erin jackson she won in speed skating um she won the 500 meter speed skating gold at winter olympics she's 29 years old and she almost missed competing in the competition because she slipped during the qualifying trials but her teammate and her friend, Brittany Bow gave up her spot so that she could ensure a win for the U.S. team. Wow. Talk about confidence in your teammate. Brittany said, you know what, girl? I, I trust you and I believe in you and I want that opportunity for you just as much as you want it for yourself. And I'm going to have another shot before this goal for the U.S. We're going to let you have it. Wow, talk about black girl magic. That's talk about uplifting your sister. Yes. Talk about... Talk about it. Yes, I love that. We need more of it. I love that. Erin is the first U.S. woman to win a speed skating gold. Oh. And, um, well, she's the first woman to do it since Bonnie Blair did it in 1994, but she's definitely the first black queen to do it. So, go girl. Okay, and speaking of the Olympus child, Shakari mm. knows how to keep the people in the uproar, but in this time for good trouble. Mm -hmm. This time for good trouble. So, she is speaking out after this week. Headlines came out of this girl and in russia she's a russian skater she failed her drug test back in december and they were not allowing her to compete right mm. they were not allowing her to compete until she went before a judge and they overturned they overruled that decision allowing her to compete saying that if she won that she would not be awarded like she wouldn't do the she wouldn't be awarded on the on the on the step right but i think I don't know. I think, I think this is some. I want to know what kind of drug this was. This, read it, girl. Because read it. Read it, it was her. It was her grandfather's um, heart medicine. It's trimetazine, and it's a drug that's found to, uh, that's supposed to boost athletics or athletes' endurance and their blood efficiency. So, in other words, so it wasn't her granddaddy medicine. It's a, it's a, it's a performance enhancing drug. So she took a performance enhancing drug. THC is not a performance enhancing drug. She just got a little high because her mama died. Right. At the end of the day, let's say, let's call the spade a spade, right? Of course, the uh, the Russian lady or the Russian girl is getting away with it because she's because of the color of her skin. Of course, we know that she carry. Both of y'all ass wrong because none of y'all supposed to be doing drugs. No way. Let's keep it real. Let's, let's decriminalize marijuana let's usage. Let's decriminalize <laughs> marijuana uses, but this is the Olympics. Yeah, you're right. You're you right. know what you're supposed to be doing when it's time to go to the Olympics. That goes for the Russian girl, and that goes for Shakari. That's true. How the F ever, we know that Shakari came down a little bit harder because she was one of the fastest people in the world. When it came down to the track sheet, this, this Russian girl was also favorite to win too. She she's very no, well known. There there's many similarities mm -hmm. here with their case. Of course, it's because of your skin. Of course, all of the odds are always against you. We already know this, mm -hmm. but I think both of y'all are wrong because I just don't I just don't like seeing athletes. 
I, it's doing like, drugs. But it's less about both of them being wrong. It's more about, okay, if the Olympics says that I can't do, that I can't compete because I was found doing illegal drugs, then that's the rule across the board. And you now right. And this drug that I was that I was caught doing, I mean, speaking as if I were Shakari, right. that drug that Shakari was caught doing was, was not, not a, a performance-enhancing performance enhancing drug. Correct. And this, and this Russian girl gets caught with a, neg- with a positive drug test for a performance-enhancing drug, and yet she's still allowed to compete. So wrong on both sides for doing drugs, but Olympics, hey, y'all, y'all got to get y'all too. shit together. Yeah, y'all wrong that's too, fair. because y'all looking real racist right now. Exactly, and you know y'all we call them folks out. But we been knew that was racist. You can't have no Black Lives Matter stuff. You can't have, you know, a certain hair type. You can't have they a have certain number. Hair regulation? You remember they had the certain t- certain number of, like, uh, swim caps the, the, the athletes could wear while they were swimming. Was like before or after the hair, the hair, the crown acts? I wonder. Hmm. This was just recently. About the, the, ah, that's interesting. Anywho. Yes, okay, so, hmm, New York mayor calls for the ban of drill rapping music. All right, so Black Man is the mayor of New York. His name is Eric Adams, and he spoke out against drill rap following the death of a Brooklyn drill rapper, Shy Vitz, um, who was shot and killed in his Bed-Stuy neighborhood. And now this is, we're at the, coming near the end of February, and as of this weekend, there have been a total of five other drill rappers, drill style rappers in New York that have been slain, you know, due to gun violence in 2022. Um, do you know what drill rap is? Yeah. Okay. For those that do not know, it is gangster, quote unquote, or trap rap driven by social media beef that features violent, dark lyrical content. And um, drill rap focuses on crime and the daily ordeals of life in the streets. The word drill is street slang for the use of like an automatic weapon. And um, Adams, the mayor, basically, he's, um, he's, he's made plans to meet with social media companies in an effort to ban drill rap content from their platforms because he argues that this type of music sensationalizes that lifestyle, incites riot-like behavior or barbaric, like, you know, street, street-like behavior, and he thinks that this type of music should be censored. Um, most recently, some of the other j- famous drill rappers like Fabio Foreign, Mano, B-Love, um, and a few others, they sat down with Mayor a- Adams in an attempt to gain some understanding and get like a, you know, a level playing field. What do you feel about it, Queen? I don't feel. I don't feel. What's your What's your reason behind it? I don't care for drill rap. Heard. All that shit is noise. Heard. I'm gl- I'm so proud and glad to hear you say that, girl. I'm just not into drill rap. Like King Von, that was as far was as it was going because King Von had like a little storytelling abilities and stuff like that. And and they say that's like a part of you know drill drill rap. Like that's like one of the biggest characteristics, like being able to tell a story in such blunt and basic and direct detail. Yeah, that part I like King Von style, but me as a big girl, thirty years old, going to listen to drill rap. I ain't listening to that shit. But I do think that Eric is a little out of touch with his community Mm. because this isn't the first time that he said some very outlandish things as the mayor of New York City. His son is actually an executive member on um, at Jay Z Z's record label. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And that's where he first got exposed to like the terminology about drill rap. I personally, okay, censorship is a real thing. We talk about it all the time, right? We we are in favor of censorship when we're talking about censoring something that doesn't have anything to do with us, right? And I um I agree, I agree. It's like it's just weird, like how we pick and choose right. what is right and what is wrong, what we're willing to accept exactly. instead of in, that instead of knowing what we need to change. Exactly. It's like okay, yeah, we know we need to change this. However, this is just the facade. So this th- isn't the real thing. Like we're not rapping about the r- this for real. It's just the facade. Nah, nah, but th- that's not. But you. But it's lies. It's cap. Okay. To that point, I, 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 to take us to take us right back to censorship. Right. Remember, Twitter kicked Donald Trump off the platform for his language and usage of inciting a riot. You know, the things that he was saying that was literally encouraging craziness to happen, right? Well, the type of craziness that was happening was craziness that was directly affecting black folks and people that believe in things that we believe in, right? right? So when we're talking about strengthening black voices, Mm -hmm. what type of strength for black communities, black cultures, black, black people is found in drill music if the whole point and purpose of drill music is literally illustrating the story about how I'm about to go and rob and kill this man. So I know that I know that hip hop, we have like a, a, a rooted history in telling stories and telling our realities. And I am the biggest 
fan and proponent of like endorsing and, and celebrating black black stories that means like all different types of stories i understand that but at what point do we do we make a censorship in the types of stories that we that we tell if those types of stories are going to like lead to negative destruction within our community because what positive what's what, what kind of positivity is coming out of drill music like I said, as a community, we have a line of exception that mm. and that we that we draw. Mm -hmm. Like I said, for example, we can say nigga, but y'all better not call me a nigga. We can talk mm. about um, killing each other, but y'all better not kill us dead in the street. Like, where does the line get drawn at? There is no line. Like, and see, when the line gets drawn, people have people be up in arms because we just talked about last week. The community needs leaders. Leaders are not always well liked in their moment. Mayor Mayor Adams just drew the line, and people upset about it. But guess what? In twenty years, are we going to look back and say, "So glad he did that"? Because when Dr. Martin Luther King was drawing the motherfucking line, so niggas what, weren't upset. So what do we? Happy. But what did we see come out of this this meeting? Are they going to did did Eric Adams want to continue to have like their allyship? So he's gonna say no, you know, excuse me, like take a step back on wanting to ban drill music, or is it that you know this is more so like a mentorship opportunity of you know, hey, this is why I don't want drill. This is why I want drill music banned, and this is what we need to do to see the actual change. So I guess we just really we really need to know what, what came out of meeting. the sit down. Yeah, was it just a photo op, or was it just an actual step? to getting some shit done sounded like a photo op because in a in an artist standpoint you know who who are you to censor my work right if i use my platform to just to to do what i want with my platform everybody doesn't have to pick up the mantle of strength of strengthening and uplifting black voices right because at the at the bare minimum all we got to do is stay black and die and that's really that the the point black people are trying to do the bare minimum mm. <laughs> <laughs> moving well, <laughs> on to the bare minimum child because girl you could have kept this <laughs> up next on you could have kept this up next on you could have kept this miss amaretta uh, so she shoots this video outside of the Bra the new brave stadium which is ironically located in in cobb, cobb county, county. Mm -hmm. truest not even um the real turner field no Rest in peace to the Ted Turner. And she, by she, we're talking about the Amaretta. rapper Amaretta. And yes, the single and that we're talking about is... Is this Not Atlanta... Sorry, Not Sorry Freestyle. Right. Where she explains how all of the cities on the outskirts of Atlanta are not Atlanta. And don't have claiming rights to claim that they're from the city of Atlanta. Now, girl, bye. I just have a cute... Uh, a few little point... A few points. We can keep it... Real quick for you, Amaretta, mm -hmm. queen. Queen. Well, first you you filmed your video outside of Atlanta, <laughs> and Truist Stadium is not Atlanta. <laughs> Second, <laughs> I just think that it's really funny how people that are, you know, born and raised true to the inner city of Atlanta, you know, educated by APS public school system, whatever, you know, they have this special claim to, to only being the ones to rep the city of Atlanta as their hometown. Like there's so th like there's just experiences that are exclusive to living within the city because I grew up Atlanta adjacent. My home church was in the middle of the bluff. You know, I I have almost every single old Atlanta experience that was that was that was lined up within my time of living here that anybody that lives in the city would have. I remember watching the old football stadium get blown up sitting sitting on 20 when we parked on top of the on top of 20, you know. I remember going to the to the All-Star games. I remember hanging out at at um the the underground uh stadium i remember going trick-or-treating in the herndon homes across from my church in the night like like i don't know what what experiences like I, my high school was atlanta adjacent and i have specific memories of playing at the georgia dome or right. watching cheering my team on in the phillips arena right Phil, cheer, you know cheering the band on i mean right stevenson was a, was synonymous with schools from atlanta quote right unquote. i just don't understand like What's I don't get the point of the yeah. divisiveness. I don't get the point of the exclu as of the exclu exclusivity right. of being from the city. Because what's gonna happen when Buckhead say they not Atlanta? That's not gonna happen though. They did shut that down this week. Mm. 
coming down in political updates. But I'm just saying, and also, if you want to base it like that, then okay, then people that are not Atlanta don't need to be supporting your music. And I just want to see how successful the city of Atlanta would be without its metro community. Yeah. Boom. Period. Because you said it in a nutshell. And that's basically what I put, put on Twitter. Like, you going against the city is not going to get you on. Board. Right. You want to be known. You want people to support you. And the going against the going against the city is not going to get the people support. So right. And one it. more thing. One more thing. Don't come for the East. Don't come for the East, baby. Right. Lithonia be minding their <laughs> black-owned business. Okay. And then here y'all come <laughs> with the Lithonia. What? Q why y'all have to do that? Q Nini leaks. Now, why, how did I get in it? <laughs> I didn't even do anything. Why am I in it? And why am I in it? I don't know, girl. Keep that to yourself. It's not Atlanta of you to do that. That was that was very lame. Mm -hmm. Anyway, coming up next, the black folk in the Senate are putting pressure on Joe Byron. But for what this time? We'll find out more in the political update coming up after this mix. And if you would like to be featured in the mix, you can be sure to go to www.nightmareradioshow.com to submit your music for a chance to be selected. Keep it locked. We'll be right back.